Hello everyone, my name's Lost, and today we are going to set up a framework for skills. Uh, we've, we are going to convert the system that we currently have for controlling the plate into a state machine. We're going to change the camera up, and we're finally going to get minions respawning. So, first things first, we're going to add a new sprite called Sprite Spielance, and this is going to be the first skill for the warrior. So, what I'm thinking with this skill is that we're going to shoot the warrior up into the sky, He's going to go off the screen, and then, you know, a couple of moments later, he'll fling himself down and hit an area. It'll be like an area of effect kind of skill. So this is just the icon I've made for it, these two. Uh, that one needs to go first, because the one that's like got like a, a transparent white kind of thing over it is the selected state. This one's just the non-selected state. Uh, we're going to need another sprite. And this one is, this is going to be like the info box, so when we, we, when we hover over the um, skill, it's going to create a box above it, or draw a box above it with some writing in it, um, explaining what the skill is, how much damage it's going to do and stuff like that. So we're just going to go skill info, and again, as always, you'll find these images in the description below. You need to set the origin to bottom left, I do believe, yeah. So next up we need a create event and we're going to turn the skill into an object. So let's call it Object Spearlance and just link it to the skill. Now we're doing something a little bit weird here in the sense that while the object is going to contain the sprite of the Spearlance, we're going to set the alpha to zero and draw it instead. That sounds a little bit confusing but as, as we go forward I'll explain exactly what we're doing and why we're doing it. Uh, so I think to start with, I just make the text bigger so you can see it. And there we go. So let's just call this Vars, I think. Vars and Alpha. Yeah. Wow, I remembered something. <laughs> well done. So, image alpha is zero. We'll just say desk, obviously short for description. And now we're just, it's got to, just going to be a string in here. So, I just put jumps into the air a great distance. And damages area after crashing down. Now, that was a terrible description, but <laughs> you can change that. We'll change that eventually. This was just a test to make sure I can get it working. So we're going to set up a step event. This is just going to be the position of the object. And so x is going to equal object.control.viewx uh, plus 270. So that's no matter if we move the camera left or right, this will always be in the same spot. And the Y is just going to equal room height minus 133. So, yeah. Now we'll have to change the Y on this for the skills when uh, we add jungling. Because I'm going to have a lane coming off the center of the map that probably goes up. And so then we'll be able to move the camera up to see the jungle and stuff. Um, I say jungle, it's not really jungle, it's just going to be like a square with some minions in that you can kill for gold and stuff. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to create a view Y variable as well, but not right now, that's future. So in the warrior, in object warrior, we need a new variable called Q skill. And our Q skill equals instance create layer. And then, yeah, I'm just placing it in the right position. And there we go, there's the first Q skill. I, th I think I'm going to do three skills for each, char uh, each character that we create. One being like a, an ultimate, I guess. So here we go. Let's now draw the skill to the screen. Because as we've already set, we've set the... Um, we've set object spielance to alpha zero so we can't see it. Uh, and in here I explain why that is the case. So we'll say it's instance position. The mouse X and the mouse Y. So if the mouse is over player dot Q skill. Okay. So if it's over the object, where the object would be at the bottom left. The reason I can't just leave the object there, the reason we have to we have to draw this in the GUI event is because 
the GUI event is always on top. No, it doesn't matter about depth, that, that's irrelevant. The GUI is always on top. So if we just want to put an object down there where the GUI is, it will be beneath the GUI, the UI, sorry. So we can't do that. We, we're going to have to draw it instead. It was an oversight on my part. Perhaps I should have then left like a hole in the UI sprite where skills would go. But you know, that sounds like an awful lot of work now that I don't really want to do. So I'm just going to do it like this. So we're going to draw this, this sprite. Global.player. Obviously that gets the warrior. Then we're saying dot skill. So now that then gets the that object that is Q skill, and then we're saying dot sprite index, which gets the Q skill sprite index. And if if the mouse is over the Q skill, we'll set the sub image to one. And then obviously we're just gonna, yeah, we're just setting where where it's drawn. And then we'll say we're gonna draw the sprite skill info. And. Don't worry about the coordinates and stuff, like I've already got this right, I've, I've had a little play with it to make sure it's right. Yeah, there we go. And now we're going to we're gonna do something cool here. We're going to draw, oh no, in a second, draw set hitchline. So we have to do this because up here, we're setting hitchline to centre, so now we have to set it back to left. And this one's pretty cool, draw text ext. So as you can see here, it wants an X, Y, string, separation, and something called W. So, first of all, the X and Y, we just set the sprite to where we want it. I mean, sorry, we set the text where we want it to start. The string, obviously, is what we want to write. Separation is how far lines are separated. Okay, and the W is the width. So, how far a piece of text can go before it needs a new line. All right? And the separation, the sep parameter down here, is how far the lines are separated. So let's have a look. And then for the string, we then just have to say global.player.qskill uh, dot description. So we're going to have 20 pixels between the lines. And if the if the text exceeds 220 pixels, it will create a new line. That's what that means. And I found that by hitting F1 and going to help and uh, looking for something that would do something like this. So else we'll just say draw sprite, uh, global play skill, Q skill I mean, sprite index. And this time the sub image will be zero, but everything else will be the same. So yeah, let's have a look. And yeah, there we go, guys. Looks pretty good, and it works. So, now it's time to convert this into a state machine. Um, state machines essentially allow you to control things a lot easier. Instead of having like a million if statements, you can split these if statements into different sections so that they're not all overlapping and things, and they're not all going off at once. So, the, you'll find the professionals use this sort of system because it allows your code to be much more flexible um, it allows you a lot more control over everything which is really important so to do that you go into your room and we need a creation code and we're going to say after I make it a little bit bigger I'm going to say enum warrior state like that and in there we are going to have two states we're going to have control and we're going to have Q skill so the control that state is going to be all the code that we have right now in, in the step event for Object Warrior. And the Q skill, we'll get around to that next episode, and that will be triggering of the skill. Okay? And as you can see, everything turns red in there. So into Object Warrior then, a couple of changes. First of all, highlight all of it apart from the depth bit and Control X. So now we're going to create a script. We're just going to paste all that in here. And we're going to call the script uh, SCR Warrior Control. And now we create the switch. So a switch is essentially an if statement. I guess in theory you could do this with an if statement, but I prefer switch. It's slightly more um, optimal, I guess. It's more optimized, it's a bit faster. So switch state. Now we're going to create the state variable in the create event. And we'll do it at the top. So it kind of makes sense. So we'll say state equals 
warrior state dot control like that so we'll say switch state and now we say case warrior state dot control so if state equals warrior state dot control then this will happen then we'll run all the code in warrior control and then break break at the end just means stop I guess that's probably simplifying it but as far as as far as we're concerned it just means stop and then underneath we're gonna write if uh, sorry case warrior state dot q skill and then obviously we haven't this is this doesn't exist yet but in the future it will so yeah we're just gonna do that and now I'm just testing it to make sure that it all still works and that I've done everything right and yeah it all still works just fine um, yeah so I just make sure as well that we can still attack things and you know I haven't broken everything but no the state machine is is working I mean what we could do is we could then split the different things into state so we could have moving as one state we could have attacking as another state but our code works quite well and I don't really want to mess with it because I like where it's at and it works really nice as well so I'm not gonna bother with that so yeah there we go I've, I've tested it enough now I think it all works just fine so now if you go into object control and go into the step event we're gonna change how the camera works because I'm sick and tired of using the middle mouse button for this I want to just change it to A and D uh, so let's just say if keyboard check and then we'll say odd so yeah odd D then we can just go about copy and pasting this in and then we'll just say if else if keyboard check odd A and we can just cut and paste it. and yeah we'll just we'll just put this in both of them and then destroy the middle mouse bit or delete it I mean now if you want to keep it as the middle mouse you're, you're fine to do that but I, I'm just I've had enough of doing that now <laughs> it's too much work this is just easier so yeah it still works and smash it so let's get minions respawning then so first, thing, first things first instead of having object control creating the minions we're gonna assign this to the object portals instead so first we're getting the player um, minions so just open the object portal player and do this in the create event uh, also we set a defense variable in here just so it doesn't crash the game when one of them gets attacked so yeah defense is 50 and then we go back into control we grab the object minion create and we do it in yeah we do it in the enemy's portal and now if we head back over to our portal then we need a step event and in here we're just going to respawn the minions so I'm actually not entirely sure how League of Legends goes about doing this but we're just going to say if instance number of object minion player if it equals if it equals zero then we're going to respawn them and we do that by just copying and pasting this again and yeah there we go and now obviously we're just going to go ahead and do this for the other portal obviously delete player and again it's just a copy and paste job and yeah there we go so let's just have a little look I'm not going to play this uh, I just watch the interaction between the minions. I'm going to speed up a little bit so here, but what I find is that the enemy minions have a little bit of an advantage. I'm not really sure why, but it doesn't matter. I'm kind of glad that they do because obviously, you know, with, with us being the player, um, <laughs> we're probably going to win anyway. So it's probably not not such a bad thing. They they have a a slight advantage. For some reason, the pathing is just a little bit better at the bottom. Uh, but yeah, we, we can probably edit that. Maybe we will. Maybe I won't. I'm not sure. But yeah, let's see what happens. So the enemy minions obviously won the first round, but now they're attacking at our tower. So I'm th I'm kind of thinking at this point, you know, oh well, you know, it's balanced because we'll win it back, right? And now we'll get to go and attack theirs. Um. <laughs> except then I'm thinking, oh shit, they've got all their minions back, right? So now I was just going to get obliterated under the tower. And then they're going to just have free reign at our tower and they're all alive as well still oh no does one of them die nope they're all still alive so now 
they've got to run at our tower. And I think they do some pretty good damage to it here. <laughs> yeah, so... So yeah, there's, there's no doubt that the enemy minions do indeed have a bit of an advantage, but as I said, I'm uh, I'm actually okay with that. Do we get to damage theirs? I think we do, a little bit. So I'm just going to speed up and see what happens for a little bit longer. But yeah, you see what I'm saying? That They certainly do have the edge a little bit. But yeah... I'm going to end the episode here guys, um, if you have any comments about balance or anything like that, anything you'd like to see tweaked, please do let me know in the description. Please, if you've followed this series along so far and you've played with the values for the defence and stuff, let me know what you've come up with. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for watching guys and I will see you next time. Hey guys, Lost here. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe if you're new and want more content like this and please give me your thoughts down below in the comments. Catch you guys later.